here. I made this video for you today. If you're looking to explore the world of warm sake and you've never done it before, or if you're looking for a new way to warm sake at home. There are four different methods that I use in this video. And each method has its own advantages or disadvantages. Depending on what you're drinking, who you're serving it to, how much time you have, and the equipment in your home, you might want to try a different method. All four of these are good in their own way. So let's have a look. The first and simplest way to warm up your sake is to use a microwave. On the plus side, it is very fast and convenient. On the downside, the sake doesn't heat quite as evenly as some of the other techniques, and you can't control the temperature as accurately. Of course, you'll need a bottle of sake and something smaller to pour it into so you can get it into your microwave. You'll also need some cups suitable for drinking a warm liquid, glass or porcelain or earthware will do for this. And if you have a thermometer lying around the kitchen, like a meat thermometer or a sake specific thermometer, by all means use it. It's going to help you control the temperature much better. So fill up your tokuri and pop it into the microwave. I cover with plastic wrap. In my experience, it helps to trap the heat and heat the vessel more evenly. And I start off at 45 seconds and then see where that gets me. My microwave is on the weak side. I highly recommend you start off at maybe 30 seconds, pull it out and see where you're at. And if you need to, you can always add another 10 seconds or so to bring it up a few extra degrees. And so when the sake is ready, I usually give it a little swirl just to mix it up and equalize the temperature. And if you don't have a thermometer, you can touch the recessed bottom of the tokuri to get a better idea of the sake temperature by hand. But of course, if you have a thermometer, by all means, give it a check. And this one's just where I like it. At this point, you're ready to enjoy your sake. Pour it into your favorite cup and enjoy. The next method of warming sake is by far the most traditional, and that is the hot water bath method. Because it warms the sake more slowly, it gives you more accurate temperature control. It does take slightly longer to set up, obviously, but to me, there's a comforting aspect to having a nice hot pot of water on the table um, on a cold night. So once the water is boiled, I take it off, I set it on my table, and I set a timer for three minutes with the tokuri inside. You want to take extra care to check that the water goes up at least halfway up the side of the vessel or the bottle if you happen to be warming the whole bottle. This way you can get a more efficient temperature exchange. I check the bottom of the tokuri, which is usually recessed, and this will tell you the temperature of the liquid inside rather than the liquid outside by touching the outside of the vessel. And once you've hit the temperature that you're looking for, you're all set. The next technique is an excellent way to warm up just a little bit of sake if you just want a small serving. You don't need anything special. Uh, however, this is not going to give you hot sake actually, but more like warm sake, which can be quite good. For this technique, you will need a heat resistant glass to pour the boiling water into and also someplace to discard that water after you use it. Uh, I'm using a small masu, but you don't need to do that. You can just use your kitchen sink. So I pour in the water straight from the kettle and I let it sit for about a minute to make the glass hot, at which point you can dump it out carefully. And now you've got a hot glass. So you fill that hot glass with room temperature sake and you get a very gentle warming. It should be just above body temperature, which is a really great zone to explore for the richer, uh, earthier Junmai style sake. The last method of warming sake might be the least practical for most people, but I do really enjoy it for some of its benefits. You get perfect temperature control this way, and it's quite good for serving large groups. You can let your sake rest in the sous vide bath and just sit there. It's not going to overheat. You don't need to watch it, and you can dial in the exact temperature that you'd like. The downside, of course, being you need a sous vide machine. So gather your turkuri, your sake, and uh, enough cups for you and your friends. Fill up that tokuri all the way to the top and get your sous vide machine set to the temperature that you would like and start running it. And once you have everything ready, this is pretty foolproof. You get the temperature of the water set to where you want the sake and you just put the sake in there. You can go about finishing cooking food or whatever you're working on and when you come back, 
in about 10 minutes, the sake will have warmed up to the temperature of the water. I really like this method, although you do need some special equipment to try it. So those are the four techniques that I use to warm sake at home. And if you've never tried warm sake before, I highly encourage you to do it. And if you're not sure about what temperature you should be warming your sake or what kind of sake you should be warming, I have a couple of links down below to other videos that can explain that to you. Thanks for watching and kanpai. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe.